Ragdolling and fall damage can be surprisingly complicated features to add to a game, but with Narrative Pro 2, we include them right out of the box. Today, we're going to show you how to integrate them into your game, and it's going to be less than 10 minutes. All right, let's get into it. So to get started, we're going to come into the demo level. If you follow the install guide, this is where you will be, basically. And if you search for Gasp Player, this is the uh, player character that will spawn in that you control in the project and if you come into the character movement settings here this is where all of the ragdoll uh, options are so you can search for ragdoll and uh, these are the montages that you play to get out of the ragdoll um, but i want to talk about these full settings because these are quite important the first one is how fast should i be falling before i just start entering ragdoll so at a certain velocity we just want to enter the ragdoll automatically um, we actually have this set at a very high number because we didn't really want to enable by default. Um, I don't love the feature, but it's it's a nice one to have if you want. So we'll show you that in a second. Um, and we also have this impact slope threshold. So if you land on an unwalkable slope in Unreal Engine, by default, you just slide down it and it doesn't look very nice. So what we do is if you land on an unwalkable slope and you're falling at a certain speed, we will automatically ragdoll you and you will basically tumble down the slope. And games like GTA and Red Dead do this, and it looks really good. Finally, um, this one's actually negative, uh, which is a little confusing, but it basically is the full speed that you need to hit the ground at before we will ragdoll you. So if you jump and you land on the ground not very hard, you'll just land. But if you hit the ground really hard, your character should crumple up, and that's basically what this last setting will do. So let's go ahead and show you these. I'm going to go ahead and just spawn my character up here. So we will hit play on this little balcony. And I'll show you the uh, the crumple one first. So if I hit the ground up here, you can see that my character just crumples up because the full impact is too high. Um, the unwalkable slope threshold, this one's quite cool. So I'll show you this one as well. So if I was to set the unwalkable slope threshold to a really high number and jump onto this roof, I am going to just slide off of the roof because that's what Unreal does by default. And it doesn't look very nice. So if I try this here, you can see I just slide off the roof. It's not, not very AAA. So if we change this to a lower number, let's do a thousand. If I fall onto an unwalkable roof, uh, or slope at a, a full speed of greater than a thousand, um, I will start to to ragdoll and tumble off of it. So I'll show you that. <laughs> Much more high quality effect. You want to be careful. It's a little bit of a bug with this slope threshold. If you hit a completely vertical wall like this, it is actually considered an unwalkable slope, and we'll we'll be fixing this in later versions. So you, at the moment, you just want to be careful. Don't set the unwalkable slope threshold too low because if you run and jump into a wall, it'll just ragdoll you down the wall. And this actually can look nice, but in reality, it, it, it often is quite annoying for players, I would say. So you just want to be a bit careful with that at the moment. And the other thing is, uh, I'll just show you that full ragdoll threshold. So if we go into the CMC settings, I'm going to turn this to a lower number. Sorry if there's any background noise, by the way, guys. There's a little bit of building work going on. So I'm going to hit play. And if I start falling at greater than 2,000, I will enter the ragdoll automatically now. Um, a, a cool command that you can use, by the way, is p.visualize movement1. And this lets you see your velocity. So we can actually see that as our speed increases, I hit that 2,000, and boom, I start ragdolling automatically as I fall through the air. So that's what that last one does. Um, and yeah. The other thing to note is that there's this narrative NPC. And this is the uh, player that is spawned in for NPCs. So if you go into the NPCs character movement component, you can change all of their settings there as well. The other thing to note is that you probably have noticed we're not taking any fall damage. And this is because by default, when your character spawns in, in the demo map, um, we actually add invulnerability to them. So. If you come into the CD default player, you can just search for that in the content browser. You can see we have this uh, state.invulnerable tag that we add to you. So you could remove that if you want. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to play here. 
And I'll just run a console command that we give you, which is uh, remove gameplay tag. By the way, if you notice the characters that have twitched a little bit there, that's just a problem with um, the falling animation is not being loaded in yet. And you won't ever see that in a packaged game because we show a loading screen while we're loading everything in, in a packaged game. So we're going to go to uh, narrative.state.invulnerable. I'm going to run this remove gameplay tag command and now I will be able to take full damage. And you'll see this here that if I land on the ground, you can see that I take some full damage. And if I was to fall from, from a higher um, distance, so I'll spawn up here. If I jump off and hit the ground. Ah, oh, damn, I still had that invulnerable tag on. Got to take that off first. So we'll come back up here. Remove gameplay tag invulnerable. And bam. <laughs> cool. So you might be wondering, how do I tune this uh, number? What you want to do is go into the either NPC or player, depending on which one you want to tune go to the character movement and if you look in the details panel there is this full damage curve if you double click on this um, it'll open up this little curve editor and you can actually modify the values so the way that it works right is you can see this this value here it's set to be one and you can see it's negative 1800 so if i'm falling at faster than 1800 units per second i will take one full damage and one meaning my my max health right if I sort of go halfway, you can see that if I'm falling at like 1500 units of speed, it will only do half damage to me. And if I'm falling at 1300 or less, it won't deal any damage to me. So it's up to you how you want to tune the full curve. You can change it, change these values to whatever you like. Something to note is you can ragdoll the character at any time for any reason. You just grab a character and you can call the set ragdoll function on the character and that will make them ragdoll. And there's also the ragdoll for duration function, which lets you ragdoll the character for as long as you want. So I could ragdoll my character for three seconds. So if I hook this little code up here, when I press the five key, it should make me ragdoll for three seconds. I'm going to press five and you can see that I ragdoll. And after three seconds, it will automatically transition me back into the walking movement mode. So it's a custom movement mode. It is implemented in C++. If you are familiar with C++ and movement code and, you know, that sort of thing, you can actually look at the code. It's in narrative character movement dot CPP. You will find that in the code files. I should also note that in the editor, we have hooked the X key up to be a little ragdoll toggle. Um, and if you don't want that, you can just come into the gasp character and search for ragdoll. And you can see we're literally just a little bit of code here. And it actually is only in the editor as well, so you can you can remove that here if you want it. We've done a little bit of work here in the editor, such that um, if you ragdoll in first person, it will look okay. But the nature of ragdolling is that it is obviously a very uh, erratic movement, and it's going to move that first person camera around a lot. So it's it's not an amazing effect, uh, but it works surprisingly well in first person. Uh, so just something to note, people that are doing, you know, first-person camera mode, it's not uh, the best in first-person at the moment, but, you know, it works. All right, guys, we're going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, and good luck with uh, adding ragdolling and full damage. And if you make any crazy ragdoll stuff, definitely post it in the Discord. Speaking of the Discord, that's where you want to ask your questions. So if you need any help, uh, hit us up in there, and we'll do our best to assist. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you later.